All right, we're live. Uh, I have Andrea here dealing with some shoulder neck problems and also been tentatively diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome. Yes. So tell us just a little catch up of like what you've been feeling and what's been going on. So I've been having not constant pain, but pain with certain motions and um, like range of motions in my anterior delts, um, so my front shoulders, um, as well as on the left side and my infraspinatus coming down through my triceps, um, like with pain, you know, in my low tricep and elbows. Um, similar symptoms on both sides. Um, and as far as the thoracic outlet syndrome goes, I was told that based on my symptoms because of nerve things and missing pulses. So. Yeah, you said on that right side, you'd seen uh, an acupuncturist and they did a test where they brought your arm up and your pulse was diminished on that side. And you've also been having some tingling in both hands, you had mentioned, when you're laying down on your back and you bring your, yeah. bring your phone up, correct? Yeah, just directly in the tip, like tips of my fingers, but it's almost like they just go, not even tingly, they go completely numb. Like when you touch them, it feels like I had Novocaine. Yeah. And what have you done for treatment so far? Um, so I've seen massage therapists, um, like targeted sports massage a couple times, dry needling, um, whatever the little, I don't know, those like massage guns on yes. my bicep. Um, and just like range of motion work pretty much. Um, and that's it. And so what are you seeing with that? Yeah, I know you had mentioned when we talked earlier, you're getting relief from that and you feel better, but you're not able to ramp up your activity quite like you like, right? Cause you're a power lifter. Right. So yeah, the, the range of motion, um, it really helps relieve the symptoms. I mean, fortunately during most of my lifts, I'm not in any pain, which is great. It's going to be more like more likely after. So range of motion work before and after my workouts has really helped with the pain and making my shoulder obviously feel more mobile. Um, so that like foam rolling and stuff like that, it will help temporarily. Yeah. And you said the longest relief you've had is about what, two weeks, if that? Yep, I had prolotherapy, um, which is the injection of like the glucose or whatever. And it did like it felt right after it worked. It felt great for about two weeks. And then I woke up after not doing any activity. And it was pretty much like square one with both my shoulders. Yeah. So a lot of times when people get diagnosed with like anything with like a syndrome in there, it's just kind of like a, I call it the, the junk box diagnosis. Like they don't really know. They just kind of throw some stuff at it to see what happens. You see this a lot with They'll call it like carpal tunnel syndrome. They'll call it piriformis syndrome. Now you have thoracic outlet syndrome. And what it does is it, it just tries to encompass like a huge net of everything. Because at the end of the day, when you go to a doctor or a practitioner, they have to find something that meets the code of insurance and everything like that. But the problem is it doesn't give us a tissue specific problem of what's going on. You can't fix a problem if you don't know what it is in the first place. So they go, okay you're getting bad pulse, numbness and tingling, you must have thoracic outlet syndrome. But thoracic outlet syndrome really isn't that common at all. Um, you might see it in like repetitive overuse injuries and stuff like that, like a pitcher, or like if you had a direct trauma with an accident, like your whole shoulder got destroyed. But a lot of times, it's actually coming from higher up in the neck and problems like that. So another question I'd always ask is, besides feeling that pain through here, are you also feeling some pain back behind the shoulder blade into the neck and things like that? Yeah. Um, only on the left side though, not on the right side as far yeah. as the back. Yeah. And the history of you is you've had shoulder problems on the right um, that we fixed a couple of years ago, but now you've had some neck issues. You got some disc issues in there as well. And one thing you said is when you do an exercise where you lay on the foam roller and you go down one vertebrae at a time and get some things to open up, that does, provide you some relief what that's telling me is that the main component of your injury is actually coming from your neck and everything else is um overworking from what we see so there's no rule that says you can't have two problems so what you're running into is that your shoulders aren't functioning optimal how they should like a normal human would just be like oh i don't really notice it but powerlifting and doing heavy activity can really bring some of that dysfunction to the surface. And all your body really starts to think about is it just kicks your force to somewhere else. So what it's doing is it's kicking it to your neck. And then your neck, when your neck gets really angry and really pissed off, it can actually cause bigger problems, which can cause some of the numbness and the tingling down the arm. Usually gets you pretty bad pain-wise too, where you're like eight or nine, you're like, oh shit, this really sucks. 
and it creates a lot of inflammation. So essentially what's happening for you is your shoulders aren't functioning optimal because they have dysfunction in there and it's kicking everything to the neck. So if you have different problems, say this is like where you notice the pain and down here is where you notice no pain. You got a shoulder problem, you got a neck problem, you got an inflammation problem, then you train and you go over that threshold. What's happening with all these treatments are they're only addressing your symptoms. They're not addressing your function. And I always say any treatment that only addresses symptoms but doesn't address function is actually dangerous in the long term because you said it perfectly. You go, well, it doesn't hurt when I work out, so that's good. And in my mind, I'm like, no, that's actually bad because your body is confused and doesn't know what's happening. So essentially what's happening for you with all these treatments, with the Theragun, with the prolotherapy, with acupuncture, with massage, with stretching, is think of your spinal cord. And your spinal cord has a pathway. And inside that pathway, there's two things that travel. One is pain and one is vibration and movement. So when you're doing these treatments, what they do is they stimulate these things that are called mechanoreceptors. They're your vibration and movement. And they go crazy and they start firing like crazy. And then what it does is it goes up that part of the cord and blocks some of that pain. So you don't notice it. It's the same thing when you jam your thumb in the door. You go like this. It's not fixing anything. It's just confusing it in the moment. And that's what's happening with your treatment. So now you're getting this threshold where you feel better, but are you actually better? And that's where it's dangerous because then you go get under a heavy bar, you start feeling better, less inflammation. Now your body's like, I can do this. And then you really get beat up from where you are through that. So I can confidently say you don't have thoracic outlet syndrome. What you more likely have is an accumulation of scar tissue, um, specifically to you in the muscles in the shoulder, you know, in the rotator cuff, the infraspinatus, the teres, the supraspinatus. But a lot of people miss this one muscle in the front of the armpit. It's called your subscap. Your subscap is your only muscle that supports your shoulder from the front. People that do a lot of pressing, sit at a desk, overwork like this, they actually get a lot of scar tissue that develops in the muscle in the armpit. And that scar tissue is like glue that gets in there. It makes the muscle weaker and less flexible. But the problem you're running into is it gets stuck right in that armpit. And it's actually pushing on the nerve. And it's pushing on the blood vessel, which is why you're feeling that. So if you went to a surgeon, they would probably be like, yeah, you got thoracic outlet syndrome. And they'd go in and try to do like a surgery where they would get, they cut a piece of your bone off. They try to do a release at some place, but that's not the problem that you're running into. So for you, we want to always try to just get it into like one diagnosis and it never works. And your problem is you have two problems. You have shoulder problems and you also have a neck problem. So if we don't fix both of those problems, it doesn't matter what we do. So what we need to do first is we need to get your shoulders cleaned up, get in there and break down all that scar tissue using the treatments that we use called manual scar tissue treatment, break that down, get your shoulders functioning better. That will then take the load off of your neck. So when we talked about the different problems that you have, no, none here and up here in threshold, we just start taking different problems off. We can get rid of the shoulder, then we get rid of the neck, then all we have left is just some residual damage in your tendons and joints, but we can buy that buffer from what you see. So if you don't have thoracic outlet syndrome, you got something else going on in there. So a lot of people uh, fall victim to this and they get these diagnoses and then they end up having surgeries or treatments that they don't need. So the most common cause of decreased flexibility, pain and weakness is scar tissue. Luckily, it's the most fixable with what our practitioners are designed to do getting in there and breaking that down. So I hope this video can help other people out there that think they've been labeled with something, you know, like bursitis syndrome, something like that. You need to ask more of your doctor and your, more of your practitioner because you need to have a tissue specific problem for what's going on. So I appreciate you yeah. taking the time to get on here and we'll get you into the clinic and get you all treated up. Um, we'll go from there. And if anyone else needs help, you know, always reach out. We always do these consultations to help people the best that we can. And I appreciate your time. All right. Thank I'm gonna you. Hit, I'm going to hit stop now.